Black YouTubers are losing because we are too busy fighting each other instead of just engaging with content that we like. And we also are not holding ourselves accountable enough. We're not doing enough self-interrogative work to understand why we even want to engage with content that we don't like, why we want to argue, fight, and squabble with each other, and why we're focused on isms, okay? Colorism, featureism, texturism, all the isms that we did not create because the isms do not belong to us. And as long as we continue to engage with them, we will be losing. We will. I didn't cut my hair, so we're going to wear this hat the entire video. This is a part two to my initial video about this topic. If you haven't watched the first video, you should. And before I begin, I want to bring your attention to my Black Women in Luxury video. Thank you, Jackie Ina, for watching the video and leaving a comment. Thank you so much. I worked really hard on this video, you all. It's actually an older video and it's starting to do numbers now and I would greatly appreciate it if you all took a, a view at it. It was a different style of video for me and I'm really proud of those 8K views that I have on that video. So now we're gonna get into today's video, okay? Thank you. Trying to say that Aaliyah's face, Kyra Omanique and Brianna Monique are not black women is not the gatekeeping that y'all think it is. And that is one of the reasons why black creators are also losing, okay? I'm not saying we all need to kumbaya, but trying to say that those three women who all do self-identify as black women, regardless of what they are mixed with, regardless of the fact that they are, yes, in fact, biracial, it's not, it's not giving what y'all think it's supposed to gay. It's not giving. Trying to say that these black women are not black women is not the gatekeeping that y'all think it is. It's not achieving or doing what you think it is. Brianna Monique, Aaliyah's face, and Kyra Omanique are all self-identifying black women. And although they are interracial black women, although they are mixed race black women, they are black women. And yes, there is such a thing as biracial black women. It is how you self-identify. It's also how you read to the world and what your experience is in the world. All three of those women do not benefit from being white. You know why? They're not white women. And I think that it's finally time for black people, monoracial black people, because yeah, we're gonna start using language like that today. It might not be my preferred language to use, but I understand, I understand the necessity and the need for it. It just helps us kind of create a little more clarity around what it is that we're saying. But I think monoracial black people need to understand that at the end of the day, when you're non-white, you're non-white, right? So even if you are a mixed race person, if your parent is black and one parent is black and the other is not black, you are never going to benefit unless you are passing. You are never going to benefit from whiteness. You benefit from your proximity to whiteness, but you don't benefit from whiteness. You don't get to be white. You get to be other. You get to be fetishized. You get to be exotic, like exoticized. Is that even a thing? I don't know. I'm making it a thing now, right? Exoticism, okay? That comes into play. But you don't get to benefit from whiteness, right? Because you're not white. You're always going to be non-white. And even those who are passing, if they are also consciously passing, like if they are trying to go about the world as being a white person, not just socially passing in the sense of, oh, people see them and believe that they are white and then they go and correct them and go, oh no, I'm not white, I'm actually mixed or whatever, okay? Even there though, right? If they are passing like for the sake of passing because they want to pass, you are still always living in this state of like being found out. Like, so you don't get to benefit, you don't get to benefit. Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's not giving what I think, what I think y'all are, it's giving. And we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Yeah, we are. we are. Aaliyah Face was asked in a video if she felt that the majority of her success had to do with the fact that she is light skin, had a BBL, has those texture curl, and she is biracial. And Aaliyah answered, no. 
she didn't think that all of her success had to do with those factors because the question was asking her like does she think that like youtube biases and colorism like have to do with all of her success and then the person went into detail and she said no it has, doesn't have to do with all of my success but like it absolutely does contribute to it and it is a thing and so my initial video was a response to her answer to that question and what i explicitly said in my previous video but i don't know you know we pay attention to the things we want so i say in my previous video but i'm gonna say it again even more clear here and i did say that i was going to provide feedback and a follow-up to that video anyway because that video was just to start a conversation it is not the beginning and end of a conversation feel me cool so yeah i was just you know i've sat with it more and i've been reading through the comments and yeah i stand by everything i said <laughs> like because i know what i was saying and it seems like mostly everybody understood what i was saying i was thanking Aaliyah for responding in the way that she did to that question because she didn't respond obtusely she didn't just go no that has nothing to do with my success because that would be false that'd be a lie that would be a fallacy being light skin being biracial having bbl and having a loose textured curl pattern did contribute to her success but something that Aaliyah has always been like extremely adamant about right especially after she got her bbl like even when she was now I like Aaliyah's face. Let's make that clear. I like Aaliyah's face. I've been subscribed to her for years. I like her content. Thank you. So something she has always expressed since she got her BBL and since even before she even got the BBL is that she understands that even her desire to want a BBL, you know, means something. Like the desire of wanting BBL, she did it for herself, of course, but she knew that that desire was coming from somewhere, right? And she's always expressed that maybe if she lived somewhere else, maybe if she was from somewhere else, maybe if society, you know, was just different, she would never have wanted to even do something of the such. So the reason why I appreciated her response so much is because by acknowledging that colorism, featureism, and texturism contributed to her success here on YouTube, helps <laughs> move these forward move these conversations forward and my argument like what i was adding on to that conversation was that we black people didn't create those isms and so we need to do everything in our power all of us if you identify as a black person you need to figure out how you can stop engaging with isms that we did not create and yes, one way to stop engaging with isms we did not create is acknowledging that they exist and then dismantling them. It's not, let's just stop talking about it and kumbaya. No, that's not a solution. That's not a solution. No, that's wanting to be ignorant. And it's not a solution. And what Aaliyah did by answering that question in the way she answered it was providing a solution and something i've been saying on my channel for years is that we all need to have self-accountability all of us black women need to have self-accountability that's why in my brianna video where i responded to the comment she made about nappy hair and blah 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 and who to do i said i'm not upset with why should i be upset with her like why am i about to get worked up over her comments. I understand where her comments came from. Her black mother taught her that, so she internalized it. Black people, black women internalize anti-black rhetoric all the time. And unfortunately, people pass that down to their children. And so their children internalize anti-black rhetoric and then the children grow up to become adults who continue to speak, right? Who continue to manifest anti-black rhetoric. So these belief systems continue to roam and prosper in our community. Um, we can stop it though, you know, we can stop it. So Aaliyah's response literally is a way to help us all stop engaging in the isms. When she called on us to have self accountability, she said herself like, okay, let's put it this way. If you see her thumbnail and you see another person's thumbnail, 
why do you click on hers versus theirs? Is her thumbnail truly better than the other person's or is there something deeper at play there? You should always be, I feel like, me, personal thoughts. You should always be interrogating why you engage with certain media and how that media makes you feel. I'm always interrogating why I engage with certain media and how that media makes me feel. In my previous video, I said, yes, I don't watch many light-skinned YouTubers and I'm not subscribed to many light-skinned YouTubers, not because I don't wanna watch light-skinned women and I have an issue with lesbian women, no. First of all, I understand how YouTube's algorithm works and I understand that there are biases literally programmed into this website. Like, YouTube can read you if you're in a thumbnail. YouTube knows if you're light-skinned. YouTube knows if you're dark-skinned. YouTube can read your features. YouTube can decide how to push things, right? We are all consumers. We are all consumer, like, consuming things. YouTube is a consumer, a hyper-consumer, like, focused platform it's always trying to get you to go down a targeted rabbit hole it's always trying to feed you the most like mathematically correct sort of content and so i know if i start to click on too many things that i really don't align with that i really don't relate to and that i really don't want to see youtube no matter what i do is gonna think that i want to keep seeing that kind of content so much so that my one click is absolutely 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 influencing the clicks of thousands of other people because youtube is collecting that as data okay don't engage with content that you don't like is basically Aaliyah's point but i'm just gonna say it clear don't engage with content that you don't like but interrogate why you don't like that content see i'm not i'm not choosing to not click on someone louder than me's profile or um page whatever youtube video um, because they're light skin. No, no. I'm doing it because I understand exactly why I got fed that content and I don't want the algorithm to think that's what I want to see. Hmm? Okay. Because people took that out of context and were like, it's so weird how you say you don't watch any light skin. Like you might I didn't say I don't watch any. I said I don't watch many because I understand how YouTube is programmed. And I know what I want to see. And I don't want YouTube trying to send me down certain rabbit holes that I don't like, that I don't want. Because what starts to happen, and I've done, so I've made um, basically dummy accounts, right? I've made other YouTube accounts just to, and maybe I'll make a video about that, but just to see like what happens when you click on certain content and what type of rabbit holes you start to go down. And for black women, as much as I love YouTube, it can very quickly, like very quickly, become a very disheartening place to be, especially when you, if you like struggle with your self-worth, if you struggle with your image in any sort of way, if you struggle with how you view yourself in any sort of way, YouTube can very quickly start to become a like dangerous place to be. Um, and so with these dummy accounts, when I started just like, I just clicked on things just start to see what type of rabbit hole it sent me down what type of things it wanted me to consume it started to get dangerous like very quickly very 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 quickly and it did have to do with the skin tone and the features of the women whose videos that i was clicking on and i was like oh this is a conspiracy you know like this is real um i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with khadija i love her channel but khadija talked about you know she wouldn't put herself in her thumbnails because she knew that if she was in her thumbnails, they would automatically start to get less views. They would be pushed less by YouTube. Now she puts herself in her thumbnails because she's a mass a certain platform. But when Khadija wasn't in her thumbnails and the only thing in her thumbnail was the subject of the video, what she'd be talking about, I, I witnessed it. I witnessed it early on because I subscribed to Khadija very early on. I witnessed when people would leave comments and be like, oh, I didn't know you were black. What does her being black have to do with, you know, like her analysis of whatever show or her analysis of whatever societal and cultural phenomena, right? And yes, okay, put it this way. Yes, by being a black woman, 
the lens in which she will view things will be different because the person was political always. We understand that. But the comments wouldn't just go, oh, I didn't know you were black. They would go, I didn't know you were black, comma, you know, that it's so interesting. Like they would just take it to basically be like, it's so cool to see how wise you are as a black person or basically like, I didn't think a black person would be interested in the kind of content that you're making. Um, so that's why, and when she started receiving comments like that, she was like, hmm. you know, like she made the choice to continue to not put herself in her thumbnails because she realized, oh damn, like if people knew that I was black, they wouldn't want to basically hear my opinion simply because I'm black. It's a very real thing for those of us here on YouTube, and even more so for dark skinned black women on YouTube. Like that's a very, very real thing. And Khadija did notice, she said this in her video, that when she did start to put herself in her thumbnails, at first they did not perform well. Like it really took the work of her subscribers and other people like shouting her out and stuff to kind of get them back to where they were when she first started to have a really big moment. And it's like, y'all, those things are not mistakes. Like those aren't mistakes. It's the literal algorithm. Like that's a, it's a real thing. So. My previous video, like to put it in context so you guys can, I don't know, like please, like what? <laughs> reading the comments is just so interesting because it's like people somehow received that video as a diss or something to Aaliyah and, and I was in Kara and I was like, to Kyra. And I was just like, what? I'm, what? Like, I'm like, I start the video by like saying that I'm subscribed to these women, that I appreciate what they do, and that I'm very thankful that they have decided to answer those kind of questions and want to push this conversation forward. Why would I diss them? Like, that'd be, that's so weird. Why would I? That's so weird. Why would I diss them? That's so weird. Anyway, um, that's so strange. So, to get back on the topic though about colorism, featureism, sexualism. Yeah, we just didn't invent it. We didn't invent it. It doesn't belong to us. And we really have to start figuring out ways to stop engaging with it. Because just not talking about it is not how we can stop engaging with it. But we also can't deny that like this very platform that we all love so much feeds into the bullshit. Like this very platform is definitely allowing those things to happen. And I'm also very much like this is just like a side note. I'm really tired of the conversations of about like who gets to be black and like who gets to be white and like da 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 da. Like, people were leaving some comments that were like, "Oh well, they're not black because they're interracial." And I'm like, no. Mm -mm. See, that's not gonna help us. Like, I'm sorry, but I just feel like black people are beyond like the state of black Americans in America is that of is that. We, we we can't afford to be squabbling about who gets to be black. Hmm? We don't need to be squabbling about the one drop rule. If you want to identify as black, cool. Identify as black. But understand that if you're going to publicly identify as black, then you absolutely are going to be a part of the solutions. And if you don't want to be a part of the solutions, I can't tell you that you don't get to be black, but I can tell you this, you won't be included. And we've seen that over the years. Like, historically, we have seen black people go, oh no, not you. You know, like, mm, no, because you're not, you're not for the cause. Like you, you're not helping. So be black, be black. You, you are black. If you identify as black, be black, but do not get upset if, the community doesn't want to be embracing of you because things the things that you are saying and doing are dangerous and harmful to us okay um i think that it would really benefit all black creators you know i'm gonna keep it specific to creators um if we continue to push these conversations forward 
in a way that brings about resolve. Because in my video, I do, I literally call on people. I don't, that's why I'm just like, I don't understand. If people just pick one thing to hear and then wanted to respond to that, because I am so adamantly in this video <laughs> calling on black women to interrogate why they feel a way about any of it, about any of it. If you feel that biracial black women are co-opting a space then fine fine you can have your feelings i can tell you how to feel but if you feel that biracial black women are co-opting a space then you need to also acknowledge that you feel that then you need to interrogate why you feel that i'm not going to say you're right or wrong to feel that but ask yourself why do i feel that like what is my evidence why am I feeling that way? Because I've never felt, let me put it this way. I've never felt that it is the intention of all to take up space or to take space from monoracial black women. Um, to use that language. Uh, but we can't deny that there are things that help them get in certain spaces. What I'm saying is when they acknowledge that these isms, featureism, texturism, colorism, help them get to certain places, it is a direct call out of those things. It is an acknowledgement of those things. And then it's a question to you. Are you engaging with those things? Because if you're engaging with those things, then... You saying you're okay with it. I think. I mean, that's my opinion. You tell me I'm wrong as fuck. That's okay. But, you know, if you're engaging with it, it means it doesn't bother you that much. Or you have something that you've internalized that you have to work through. Because, see, I really don't care. <laughs> like, I really don't care. It, I just don't want people to be obtuse. That's the only issue I have. I have an issue when people are trying to be obtuse about things and people are trying to pretend that things don't exist. Because my video wasn't calling for division either. I don't know where y'all are getting that from. You're projecting onto me. You're projecting, you're projecting. Um, because I'm not calling for division. I'm not saying dark skinned women shouldn't watch light skinned women. I'm not saying biracial women shouldn't be supported by black women. Like, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying if you're black, you're black. So I'm saying if you're gonna support, support. I'm saying if we're gonna be a community, be a community. And I'm saying that Aaliyah's face, acknowledging colorism, featureism, and texturism, and calling it out, and saying that, yeah, those things definitely, obviously, contribute to some of my success. I know that, like, I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't play into that. I'm not gonna pretend that by opting into body standards, getting a BBL, getting plastic surgery, that I'm not also, you know, like complicit, um, that I'm not also playing a role in this silly little game. Because people got upset with her when she was like, oh, you know, if my, com if my, sorry, not my comment, if my content upsets you, you know, if my content makes you feel bad about yourself, lesser about yourself, stop watching it. And people were like, oh my God, that's so real. And I'm like, what? How y'all upset? Homegirl is right. If you don't like her content, don't engage with it, okay? And also, if you don't like her content, interrogate why you don't like her content. Interrogate it. It's the same thing when it comes to Jackie Ina. Like, for example, people have always had so much to say about Jackie. But I've always been like, okay, but are we all going to interrogate why we feel that way? Like, you're just, like, saying things, but you're not asking yourself, why do I feel like that? Like, why do I feel like Jackie Ina is braggadocious? Is she braggadocious? Or <laughs> are you receiving her actions as braggadocious because you feel that you're lacking in this, that, and the third? You get what I'm saying? We're not doing enough of that self-interrogation. I think that's what's missing um for a lot of us and i think that's why we continue to have the same old same old conversations which is 
black against white, biracial against monoracial, blah, 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 blah. Like, we, I, we don't need any more, like, versus type of conversations. I think we just need more nuanced conversations. I think we all need to understand that, oh, babes, we're far past the point of in America at least, of it ever just being black and white. is like, that's, we're done. That's done. Like, that's done. Y'all get mad when people like, uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, Zoe Kravitz, um, you know, identifies black women, as a black woman. Why can't she identify as a black woman? I get that features and textures and colorism, you know, all benefit her, but like, she's not a white woman. And that's always been my point. I'm going to keep it a buck. That's always been my point. They're not white. So at the end of the day in America, as long as you are not white, you're not white. Do you understand me? Like in America, as long as you are a non-white person, you are a non-white person. It doesn't matter how many of the isms may work in your favor. You will... At some point, you will be reminded, though, that you're not, you're not white. You're not white. So whiteness doesn't get afforded to you. The luxury of whiteness doesn't get afforded to you. You get to skate around, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the privilege line of it. But you don't get to fully indulge in it. So for all of us to be squabbling, it's silly to me. Because none of us, none of us, none of us in America, none of us, biracial, monoracial, you know, phenotypes, given how your phenotypes, you know, I am a person who has phenotypes that are undeniably black, as blackness is understood in the Americas. Okay? So, even if you just have phenotypes, right? Because um, featureism is definitely a thing, right? Even dark skin, there are some dark women who benefit from featureism. They have more Eurocentric features. So although they are dark skin, although they might even have kinky hair, although they might be dealing with all the other things, right? That should knock them down on the privileged totem pole. Ah, that featureism though helps them because they got a smaller nose and an eye shape, however, and thinner this or whatever. Cool, great. So your facial structure and your phenotypes are helping you in some way and benefit. That's cool. At the end of the day, all of us have some sort of privileges somewhere. The thing is though, as a black person in America, you never, we're never gonna win the, the... I'm gonna clarify what I'm saying, but I'm gonna just say it how I'm gonna say it, okay? As a black person in America, you're never gonna win the privilege lottery ticket because the privilege lottery ticket in America is to be white. You could be poor, white. You could be rich, white. Doesn't matter. You're white. That is the privilege lottery ticket, so to speak. So, unless you can do that, you are only going to either get this or that or this or that. You might get, you know, a piece of privilege there and a piece of privilege here, but you're not going to get all of it. So, I don't know why we're squabbling. <laughs> the thing that I want us to all do is to be able to have conversations where we can acknowledge texturism, or we can acknowledge featureism, or we can acknowledge colorism. We can call it out. The people that benefit from it can call it out. The people that don't benefit from it can call it out. And then we can all go, okay, cool. So now that we recognize that like all these things are very, very real, how do we stop engaging with it? How do we fight back on these platforms, right? Like how do we train YouTube to stop pushing certain material in certain ways? Do we all band together and write to YouTube? I'm not past, here's the thing. There are some of y'all who don't like, you know, like Black History Month initiatives or like Black whatever initiatives. Y'all, I do. I do. After everything that we have experienced and endured, I'm totally here for it. If we get a whole special something, I don't know, system on YouTube to make it easier to find black creators. Because I'm talking about black creators of all kinds. Like, I've searched for certain things. I don't know if y'all know this, but okay. So, like, 
your views do matter a whole bunch on YouTube, of course, but your watch time, like watch time really is king. How long you can keep people watching a video is really what matters on YouTube. That's why sometimes if you go to the search, you go to search something, um, a video with lesser views may be above a video with more views. That's because the video with lesser views has a better retention, a better watch time retention. So although this person only got 2K views, on their video, people are watching it for a longer amount of time than somebody who got a million views or 2,000 views because um, I've seen it all the time um, with black creators too. And I'm like, that's so interesting because it'll show you it in the search, but then it's like, if you watch their content or even subscribe, it's like YouTube will never show you them again. And it's like, hold on. If you can acknowledge that they have a better watch time retention, which means they're clearly producing content that people want to watch for longer. I'm not going to say their content is better or worse. That's objective. But what is fact, because that's how YouTube works, right? If you if you have a YouTube channel, if you look at your analytics, you can literally see that YouTube tells you that in the little creator studio, they, they tell you all the time, watch time, watch time, watch time, watch time. So if you can acknowledge YouTube that this person has a better watch time retention, why would you not keep feeding me their content? That's weird. Don't you think? And that's what I'm talking about in my video, my previous video and this video. So this video, it was not meant to be no clarification video or nothing. It was just the follow-up. I said this video was gonna have a follow-up video. I wanted to wait and like get comments in and just kind of like see where people were at, but we got to do better. Like the squabbling doesn't do anything for us. I don't, we didn't create colorism. We didn't create featureism. We didn't create texturism. Like, we didn't create any of that, but we engage with it all the time. We engage with it all the time. Why? <laughs> like, why do we engage with it all the time? I don't understand that. Like, I want us to just call it out um, for what it is. And then I want us to be like, of course, like, here's what we're going to do to push back against it. Um... And, but you know, I know, you know, people still want to make the light skin jokes. People still want to make the dark skin jokes. People still want to make the big nose jokes. <sighs> and as long as we keep doing that, well, we'll keep having these conversations, won't we? We just will. We, we, we just will. And, and for those that think, you know, we're being Captain No Fun, we're like, that joke's not funny when you want to make a joke about someone's features or skin tones. Okay, but it's like, we're not being captured no fun. We're just letting you know that like right now, like right now, like as you're making this joke about shorty being light skin or dark skin, as you're making this joke about someone's features, you are reinforcing all of these really, really harmful things so they won't go away. And we're going to keep making ourselves feel inadequate. We're going to keep punishing ourselves. We're going to keep making fun of ourselves. To whose benefit? Hmm. Well, hope you all enjoyed this follow-up. As always, my videos are really always off the top of the dome. I have notes that I glance at. You might have noticed, but I really don't do scripts. Too often, I just, it's not my style. I've tried to do videos with full scripts and those videos always perform not well. <laughs> um, so I stopped doing that. I take my notes, I get my comments, I go on my days. But I just want to put this out here just to get y'all thinking more. You have to ask yourself why you don't like the content you have to do self interrogation because it's not their fault that their content gets pushed the way it does. We can call out futurism, texturism, colorism, and all the isms without trying to demonize and punish the people who are benefiting from it, especially if, in example, Aaliyah's face, the person benefiting from it is also calling it out themselves and interrogating it and doing it publicly on their platform and then is encouraging us to do the very same. There's no point in trying to punish her or make her feel bad. 
There's no point in trying to really punish any of them, make any of them feel bad. We, cause they didn't do it and neither do we. <laughs> These aren't black inventions. These aren't African inventions. These are not thought processes indigenous to us. And we're gonna have to undo a lot of conditioning. We're gonna have to unlearn a lot of rhetoric <laughs> and ideologies, but I have a lot of faith. Um, I have a lot of faith and hope and trust that we will. Um, I would love to see it, you know, I would love to see it, like, during my time here. I would love to see it. But if, if, if that's to come about 2,000 years from now, I'm still happy because I'm still going to see it. <laughs> I'm still see it and I'll still be happy. But I do think these conversations are important and I do think these conversations need to be had. And I do think that every time we have these conversations, we don't need to be telling people it's in their head or that it's a waste of time or that it's not productive. Because here's the thing, I'm not having reductive conversations. I'm not having these black and white conversations on my channel. My channel doesn't do that. Nothing I think I'm going to really state on this channel, save for like certain topics, are going to be black and white stances. And I think that is why my videos, especially my commentary videos, um, receive the responses that they do is because I'm not, I do take a stand, but I don't go this way, I don't go that way. I provide more context, I provide more nuance, and then I provide my opinion on that, right? And what conclusion that I've arrived at. But yeah, hmm, you know, it's hard out here. We know that dark-skinned black women, especially those of us who have phenotypes that are undeniably black, as black is understood in the Americas, know that it's hard out here. But I don't think that the solution to that is for us to try to be punishing, demonizing women who benefit from colorism, featureism, texturism. I think we should be trying to engage in conversation with them and working together on dismantling the things that we didn't exist. That honestly, ultimately, were created to tear both of us down at the end of the day. Really. But that's all I can say, and I won't make this video an hour long. So thank you for engaging with this video. Thank you for watching it. Thank you for liking it, commenting on it, sharing it, doing what it do. I deeply appreciate it. Um, I'm going to talk about divestment next. <laughs> um, I think that investment is interesting and I don't think the uh, angle I'm coming at it is one people expect.